Hi, my name is Kamal Lamani, and welcome to The Connection Show and Bless the Mic Magazine and Media. Today's topic is The Show Must Go On. It's basically about people who want to get into the music business. A little bit about me. I've been in the music business for about 35 years. I mean, I've accumulated experience of 35 years. I've been everything from a poet to a MC, a DJ, graffiti artist, because I came up back in the day when hip hop first began. But also, you know, I promoted shows and parties. I've managed groups. I've ran a studio. I created a film up in the attic, uh, did documentaries, videos, co-produced videos with newblackmusic.net and, and a whole lot of other people, uh, worked with models and fashion shows. So I've did a lot of things. I've met a lot of people. Some of the people I've met are uh, people like Karis One, Chuck D of Public Enemy, Coco of SWV. Uh, it, it goes on and on, you know. Um, Raekwon, Little C's, Lady Luck, it goes on and on, you know, and I mention that for a reason, because we all can meet people, but, you know, it's about developing relationships, and that's something in the music business, and any business, that people have to understand when they're coming into it, how to present yourself, how to develop, nurture relationships, how to network, so that's very important. You know, so the name of this is The Show Must Go On. And there's so many different topics that I had to write some notes, so please excuse me as I look down to check my notes from time to time because the music business is so huge and so intricate and there's so many different aspects of it. And you know, so many people want to get into it. And to me it's like, you want to get into the music business, it reminds me of people that want to get into the NBA, okay? Everybody wants to be LeBron James, you know, or whoever. But the situation is, okay, in, in every hood there's a basketball court, you know, and there's, there's a team, and, and it's like, let's say, for instance, there's five million kids that want to go to the NBA, all right? So first, you have to get good grades academically. You have to be a good sports person. Then you can go to high school, get a scholarship to college, or go straight to the NBA, right? But it's like five million, but the NBA might only be taking 500. So how's you gonna get 500 million people into 500? So that's how it is in the music business. There's like two or three major labels now, all consolidated, and they're only looking for a certain amount of people each year that they're really gonna put millions of dollars in to push. That's why right now you really have one hot female rapper, and that's Nicki Minaj. You know, you have a handful of hot male rappers. You know, you got your Rick Ross, you got your Jay-Z, you know, Dipset is, is coming back. You got your Lil Wayne, your Drake, you know. Um, then there's a lot of people on the underground, a lot of people trying to get there. You know, so basically what I'm saying is they're not going to put a lot of money into you unless you do certain things. And one of those key things is, of course, a buzz, marketing. And if you look in you know, business terms, that's creating a demand, all right? The music business and business works on supply and demand. So if you're not in demand, who's going to want you? I know a lot of artists, they say, you know, book me for this show. Okay, but how could we convince the promoters and the club owners that you're going to sell them out? You're going to sell tickets. You're going to sell two, three, four, five hundred tickets, you know? and you're gonna bring 500 people into their club or more so that they can buy you know, drinks at the bar and things of that nature and pay to get in, people will pay to get in. Because if I convince them that you're great and you're good and you got a following and only 10 or 20 or 30 people show up that night at the club, then you may get blackballed or blacklisted. They're not gonna to wanna to touch you or me. And my name is at stake. So a lot of times people get mad at industry executives but the industry executives know what they're doing. They don't want their name damaged, their credibility. So what you have to do is build up a fan base. That's number one. But even before the fan base, we have to go into creating your product and creating your image. Okay, so you need a quality product. A lot of people are making music on their computers now. If you make music on your computer, you still gotta know what you're doing. You still might want somebody else to check it out before you put it out there because the mic quality has to be good, the mix has to be good, 
Everything has to be tight. No one should be able to listen to it and say, oh, you did that at home on your computer. And then even recently, somebody gave me a CD, and I thought they were very professional until I saw the CD was written on with a magic marker. That's showing that you're not invested in your product. You have to invest in your product, money, okay? It has to look good. It has to look just like Jay-Z's looks in the store, just like Kanye's looks in the store, Beyonce, all right? It has to look like that. If it's not looking like that, you got competition out there whose package looks tight, commercial, okay? So that's what you have to do. You got to be on your A game because this is serious out here and your fans got to take you seriously. You can't be in the street saying, oh, this is my mixtape and it looks like garbage. So it's about your presentation, how you present yourself, how you present your package. And you can't be out there just cursing, you know, using the N-word and things like that and not knowing when to cut it on and cut it off. When you go into a boardroom, you know, which you really shouldn't do unless they're really asking to see you, you should have representation. You should have management and your management has to know what they're doing. They have to know how to put on a shirt and a tie and how to speak properly and know when to speak and when not to speak. Or else they could say one thing and you lose the whole record deal. You know, and that's why some people get entertainment lawyers. But before all of that, you gotta have the buzz. It's about marketing. And also you have to be able to get out of your comfort zone. And that's why when you watch the making of the band and we saw P. Diddy tell that band to go across the Brooklyn Bridge and get that cheesecake, a lot of people got mad at P. Diddy but I totally understand what he was doing. Because in any endeavor that you want to pursue, you have to do things that you don't expect, okay? And let's just say you had a show tonight and the limousine was supposed to come and get you, the limousine driver's loss, okay? But you got one hour. You can get mad, you can curse everybody out, you can play you the diva, you all of that. But the thing is, you better get on that train or that bus and get to that show on time and worry about all of that later. So you might just have to flip your whole game. And for the females, you can't worry about, oh, I did my nails, my hair, I got on high heels, and now y'all expect me to get on the train? Where's the limo? What's up with this? Y'all are bogus, da, da, da. No. I was just at the Ron Alexander show in New York the other day, right? A female played herself big time. She didn't know who was in the house. We had DJ Cool Clyde. He's with 98.7 KISS FM. We had an A&R from EMI Records. We had an independent label who has distribution with Atlantic Records. We had people with Blue Magic. We had all kinds of people in the house. She took, I'm not gonna say the, um, the name of the town, but she took a bus from upstate New York. And she got there late. The show started at three. She got there at five. 15 or something like that, and she's complaining. She's complaining about, oh, you're not gonna let me get on? You're not gonna let me get on? And my man was like, no, sorry, it's too late. We got a few other acts and we have to leave the venue. That's the contract. So she started you know, yelling and screaming. So he told her, and then leaving. So he told me, you know, could I go get her? I went to get her. He said, listen, listen, he's gonna try his best to get you on. Relax, we're gonna do our best to squeeze you in. She relaxed for about five minutes. And then all of a sudden she had a meltdown for no reason. And she just was all over the place, all emotional. I took the bus from upstate New York. I took the bus and he's not gonna let me perform. I brought my son, I got the suitcase. What kind of mess is this? And she's yelling and screaming and people are looking at her like, she's very unprofessional. First of all, she was late. I don't care where you came from because he had somebody that drove there from Miami. He was on time. You know, so no excuses. There's no excuses. It's very important to be prompt in any business, to be on time. Do your best. If you make a mistake once, that might be your last mistake, but if they forgive you, next time make it your business to be there early. And it's also important because you can be relaxed. Now let me go back to my notes here. We're gonna get into the copyright real quick, okay? You can't just make something and just put it out there without copywriting it. Because somebody will take your idea and put it on the radio and make money off of it, okay? And you can't just sample people's stuff 
there's a lot of rumors. Oh, you could take four bars. Oh, you could take two seconds. You can't just do that because people will sue you. They'll sue you. They'll make sure you can't perform the song like they did with Lord Tariq and Peter Guns. You know, and there was another group too. They said you can't perform it. You can't. You can't do nothing with it. Matter of fact, you owe us. You know, you got to be very careful. All right. But make sure you copyright it. There's a poor man copyright. You can do that. You can mail it to yourself. Don't open it. You got the postage date on it. That's old school way. But definitely, if you feel you got a banger, you feel you have a hit record, you send it to the Library of Congress. You can also get online and upload your MP3s to the Library of Congress. Okay? And that's, that will make sure you are protected. Then there's ASCAP which is a performing rights organization, and they handle aspects of publishing, meaning when you get with them, if you're not already with a label that has a publishing company that gets paid to publish your material and put it out there, you can start your own publishing company with ASCAP, and or if you're an artist, you don't necessarily need it, but you can have a publishing company, and or you can just get paid royalty checks as an artist. Now when I say royalty checks, what I mean is when you put a record out there on various internet radio stations, on what they call terrestrial, which is your regular radio station, and even in clubs, you will get royalty checks. But people always think, where's my royalty check? I'm getting played on this station. You know, they monitor randomly, you know, dealing with statistics, and you have to really be getting played in rotation on major stations all throughout the nation if you want to receive that check. You can't be like, you know, I'm on these three college stations, or they play me on Hot 97 at 3 in the morning two times. They're not going to monitor that. They're not going to pick it up necessarily. You know, the best thing you could do then with ASCAP or BMI is see if they have a special independent awards program and where they say, where you can tell them, look, I've been on these stations, played in these clubs, and they have, you haven't monitored it. Can I receive any compensation from that? And there have been times when people have received compensation for that. You know, so that's ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC are the three performing rights organizations that monitor your royalties. These are the type of things that you have to know instead of just making a quick song and running out there and, and not really knowing what direction to go in, okay? And it's all about marketing, marketing, marketing. I once went to a, um, I think it was called the New Music Seminar, and I also used to go to the CMJ, College Music Journal. Very important, because it's very important to get college airplay, to meet college DJs. Very important, okay? And what one of the panelists said at one of these seminars was use all your resources. So we're going back to marketing so that we can create that big buzz that you need. And usually that buzz should start off on your block, in your town, in your county, in your state, and in nearby states. That's your region. You need a regional buzz. When people come through from other areas and they come through your region, people should say, they say, who's hot over here? They should say, this person's hot. You're hot. They shouldn't hear about nothing else but, yo, this, he's the man right here, or that, or that sister can sing, or, or these people got it locked, or this record label got this whole area locked. These promoters got it on lock, meaning monopolized. Okay, you should be the only thing everybody's talking about. And then people from other regions will want to do a collaboration with you. And now you're expanding into their region, they're expanding into your region. That's marketing. You visit their region, you do your street promotions, your radio promotion, your TV promotion. But before you can do that, you have to contact the radio stations. And, and usually it's best to start from the bottom up. A lot of independent artists like to start from the top and come down. Like, they, I, want, I, want, I want to meet, you know, uh, Jay-Z. I want to meet Russell Simmons. But Russell Simmons and Jay-Z have to hear about you on the underground, hear about you on the come up, hear about you late night on the radio, hear about your buzz and read about your buzz in, in magazines and on college journals and things of that nature. Okay, when they start seeing you and hearing of you, you might get that phone call. 
You know, and you also have to be prepared to be a model, to be an actor, to be able to be flexible and to go into different, you know, areas of the music business. To be able, if you're a dancer, do some dancing, get in some videos, get in some movies. This all increases your exposure. That's very important. You want to have your face in the place. And socially, to network, you have to be at many places that you can be at as, as possible. You have to show your face, show your product, promote without being overbearing. Get into conversations. People ask you what you do. You show them what you do. Okay, there's other things that you can do in marketing. Business cards. You've got to have a business card. And your business card should have your website. Not just your Facebook, your YouTube, your Twitter. That's good to be on there. But you need a website that you're in control of. Because at any moment, Facebook could have a problem. Facebook could delete something. You know, you may, you may put something on Facebook and some more comments coming in. What you put on there disappears. So you want something you can control. You can control your image and things like that. So you want your own website. Okay, business cards, postcards, pencils, flyers. And when I say use your own resources, what I'm saying is, okay, you don't have money for this right here, right? This is, this is nice, right? You don't have money for this? Go to Staples and make this, all right? But it's better than nothing. You can put this up on the basketball court. Now everybody knows about Bless the Mic. See what I'm saying? You can put that up. You know, like I just did, you know, everybody knows about it. But don't have nothing. You know, don't, don't, oh, you a rapper? Show and prove what you got. Oh, you got a record label? What you got? You got a business card? You got a post? You got a flyer? No, nah, man, see, we trying to, it sounds bad. It sounds bad. And when you perform, I say this a lot, you got more than you on that stage. The other people, one person shouldn't have green Right, green shirt, other person got on a white tee, other person got a striped shirt, other person got a polka dot shirt, one got on shorts and boots, the other one got on long pants and boots, the other one got on a shirt and tie. I mean, you look crazy. There's no coherence. You, you don't look like you're ready for prime time, okay? It'd be better if you all had on white tees, shorts, and boots. It'd be better if you all had on black t-shirts. If, and it looks even better if you have your name on it because now you're showing, you're beaming into the camera, you're showing the world who you are. You're advertising yourself. It would be even better if you had your own clothing line and you're wearing that. Like Russell Simmons always wears his clothes and, you know, when he's on TV. You, know, you have to think. You have to think about all these different things. Okay? And don't be so quick to say, well, this person did it that way, Master P did it this way, I'm going to do it his way. The business keeps changing. Even when Master P was out, he was selling VHS tapes. VHS tapes are dinosaurs now. So you have to be prepared to have your movie and your video in digital format so that it could be on people's phones, could be in iTunes, Rhapsody. And speaking of iTunes and Rhapsody, if you want to get on iTunes, the best way that works for me, there's various ways. You could go through Reverb Nation, but the best way that works for me, and I'm going to keep it real, I'm talking about receiving checks because I've tried many different ways, and my checks come from CDBaby.com, okay? And that's because CD Baby has partnerships with iTunes, okay, with Rhapsody, Amazon MP3, Napster, and um, last FM, and it goes on and on and on. Okay, so once you upload your MP3, and they really prefer a WAV file because of better quality, once you upload that to them with your information, the cover art, and you pay them their fee, you're on iTunes, man, in a few weeks. You're on iTunes, and you can show everybody the links and put your links on Facebook and things of that nature. See, not everybody's going to tell you how to market. So parents, bring your kids to the TV, okay? Young people, listen up. Everybody's not going to give you this information for various reasons. It's called competition. But see, we need people in our lives and in our hoods that are elders that are going to tell you the real deal. So you need to listen up and, and don't be big-headed and think you already know it. 
because you think you got swag. Okay? This is for you. I'm doing this just for you so you could get a head start. When there's talent shows, you need to try to participate. But always, you know, be careful. If they're asking you for $100 to perform, they're not putting it on TV. There's nobody big from the industry in the house. You might want to pass that one up and go for the one that costs $10 or $25 to get in. You know, you got to be very careful. And you got to make sure that you make it your own thing. Can, can you sell your CDs there? Can you pass out your literature there? That's what you want to know. Can you vend? Can you have a table there? Or are they just going to get you on the stage and get you off? and treat you like you're nobody. Because you have to demand respect, command respect, and expect respect. And if they're not respecting you, it's time for you to move on. And on that note, see a lot of people, they're desperate. They're desperate. You can't show desperation. Be patient, all right? So many artists want it today, yesterday, tomorrow, but life doesn't always work like that. If it's not working like that, don't show that you're desperate. Don't be elbowing people, jumping in front of people, yelling and screaming, you know, bringing all your boys in and everybody's coming in loud. You know, be professional. Be professional, make relationships. People will remember you, bad or good, they're gonna remember you. And you never know who's watching, you never know who's in the place to be and what what they're planning on doing, what productions they have coming up. And if they see something in you, you will get that call. You will get that email. For live performances, try to make sure you get a sound check. It's very important. Come early. Make sure everything sounds right. Make sure that equipment is tight. Make sure you make friends with the sound man and the DJ, the video man. You want everything to come off right. You don't want to get there late and just jump on. Now your CD that your instrumental was on comes on louder or lower than the last person because they didn't have a time to balance you out. Or your mic is too high and it's squeaking. Now you sound and look bad regardless of how good you are. So that's about preparation for your show. Have backup CDs, backup tapes, backup everything, backup laptop. Have your, let your man, your partners, your, your manager, let them have some backups, you have some backups, you got something in the car because you might have a scratch on your CD and that throws you off. If that happens you're on stage, you want your DJ to pull one out of his pocket and put one in or your manager to bring it right back to the sound man and the show must go on because that's what the name of this lecture is right here. The show must go on regardless to whom or what because like Eminem said, you only have one shot. You know, so I spoke on CD Baby. Um, I see here that I have um, the mass emails with the DJs. Be careful with that. But when you find reputable DJs, such as core DJs, coast to coast, there's a lot of them out there. MP3, uh, I think it's called MP3XX, I'm not sure. But there's people out there that you can pay. Oh, the Wonder Twins. The Wonder Twins are great, all right, out of New York. There's people out there, you can send them, you know, their fee, you know, $100, $200, and they will send your MP3 to 20,000, 30,000 DJs all over the world. And then they will give you feedback on that, you know? So you have to be willing to invest money. There's the Ron Alexander show I mentioned in New York. You know, there's, there's all kind of cable shows, and you have to be able to and willing to invest your money. If you're in school, get that part-time job. You know, do what you have to do to have that little extra money for the studio, to make a video, to take pictures, professional pictures. Be ready to do these things. You know, and you'll be on your way. And also, there's Bless the Mic Magazine. I want to tell you about Google that or blessthemicmagazine.ning.com. Doing big things, big events coming. It's the new movement, all right? See, we only have a few more minutes. I'm making sure I'm not forgetting anything here, okay? There's music seminars. When there's music seminars in town, go to them. If for some reason you can't afford to get in and get into that lobby, the hotel lobby or whatever, 
Stand outside on the corner and pass your stuff out. Do what you got to do, man. You got to do what you got to do. Tagging MP3s. When you make an MP3, there's, you can edit it and you can put in there all the information that you want, the copyright, the artist, everything. And this will go into people's phones and everything, what you type in there. So that's very important. And 128 MP3 isn't good. You want to go for the biggest file that you can. And wherever you can create a WAV file, create a WAV file once again because of that quality. You want to have good quality. Get in a record deal. Once again, if you want a record deal, the main thing I believe you should have is buzz. You got to be buzzing the streets, buzzing the mixtapes, on cable television, college radio. You know, you got to be doing your thing. Your flyers got to be out there. Your flyers, your postcards got to be at laundromats, college campuses, everywhere you can put them, barbershops, beauty salons. That's how you got to market. It's marketing, marketing, marketing. Sometimes the person with the talent doesn't get as far as the person with less talent but more hustle. Marketing, okay? Marketing is key. Always study marketing. Always market and promote what you're doing. That's the key because the show must go on. Behavior is the last thing I'm going to speak about right now. Um, well, let me just mention real quick a few websites that I know will help you out. Soundclick.com, rstage.com, Reverb, Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, uh, Underground Hip Hop Awards, 50 Cent's website is popping. This is 50. You know, you want to get your stuff up there. Mingle City if you got positive, all right? And bless the mic, okay? Th that's popping right there, okay? You got to have your stuff out there like that. Of course, YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, I don't know what to tell you, okay? Um, Vimeo, Daily Motion. Um, and get out of your comfort zone. That's what he's talking about with P. Diddy. Get out of your comfort zone. You know, do whatever you have to do legally, the legal hustle, to make this thing happen for yourself, to make your dream happen. You could do it. You have greatness in you. You have talent. You have creativity. So do your thing. Do you. Get the support of your people and go all the way. Reach for your goals and dreams. All right? And no matter what happens on your way, remember the show must go on. So my name is Kamal Amani. Keep your reputation tight. Keep your behavior right. One love, success in all your endeavors. Bless the mic. Peace. <laughs> I know.